Hello and welcome to episode four of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. Uh, I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell, and with me, as always, I have... Lydia Nicholas. Ben Meredith. Rick Rowe. James Ross. And we're coming to you from London, England. Uh, running around the table quickly, what characters are we playing? Uh, I am Sir Bertrand Bertie McGuffingham, a posh idiot who hits things with sticks in a flashy way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am playing uh, Hamid, the halfling sorcerer who is currently slightly singed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm playing Zolf Smith, a dwarven cleric um, who is currently bemoaning ha- only having one leg. <laughs> uh, I'm playing Sasha Rackett, who is really not in- getting any use out of her uh, antique appraisal skills. That's <laughs> 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 really irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so recapping, uh, last week we left them um, basically getting caught up in some kind of heist um, with Edison's simulacrum at his uh, London house. There are craters everywhere, bodies, fire, blood. Ah! Um, and the last thing that happened was Sasha basically swung and missed with her dagger. What well, she threw. Threw, threw a miss, yeah. so don't forget to remove it from your inventory well, unless yeah, you pick it up. I did have- Fine. Give us. We've only got one pencil, so that will be the running theme. It's encouraging teamwork. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Hamid, you're looking singed. You're looking annoyed. I cast a second magic missile. <laughs> the beautiful thing about magic missile is it hits automatically. Yep. My favourite thing it's, about the spell. It, yeah, magic missiles kind of it's the staple for all of the mages. Hey. Hey. Five damage. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I rolled a four. Oh, you're actually helping. That right. Bertie would um, do if he sneezed. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Yeah, he 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 takes it on the shoulder. Ow. Yeah. In the face. All right then, in the face. <laughs> okay. Um, he then, in response. Got two people attacking him. There. Draws as part of a move action. Five. Actually. No, he wouldn't do that. That would be foolish. <laughs> he is going to... Da, da, da. <laughs> Jump down He's the hole. He's going to back up because he can still do a throne attack. Five, ten, fifteen. I'll give him an acrobatic roll to try and get up onto the stage. Fourteen. <laughs> Which he makes. Hooray! It's a bad one. Oh. But I still. Uh, for him. But an, an acrobatics achievement like done you're, well, you're I will generally always. In favor I'm always in favour of those. I'm quite. I'm like, well done. Okay, so. He has just run into a like, good range of your throwing knives, isn't he? Yeah, but. I don't know. Or, or like being stabbing in, on See, the problem oh. is. is Brain, here's a question that I don't know. You might know the answer to. If someone was intending to draw as part of their move action and also do an acrobatics roll as part they of that move action... They should take a penalty on the roll, I believe. Yeah, I believe that too. I, mean, I don't know if that would even be covered in the rules. I think it's, it's kind of a vague one. Uh, he rolled quite high, though. So I'm going to let him get away with it. He's drawn another flask. But what on earth? I know, right? It's, al- it's almost like it's their deal. John Thermos. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hoofs it straight at Sasha. Because oh. she's near and can take it in the face oh. with a big old flask of oil. And misses! Yay! Spectacularly. He basically um, he, he gets that ma- magic missile and goes, eh, probably more trouble than it's worth. Backs up, leaps up onto the stage, drawing his um, flask. He then clocks Sasha, kind of gauges the angles, throws it. Obviously, Sasha, she knows what she's doing. Very easily Dutchies. dodges out of the way. Whoop, straight across, and it basically smashes on the floor near but not on Bertie. Okay. As a result, Bertie, you're up. Okay. Um, do I have any other options apart from just hitting the guy there who's next to me? There are always options. Okay. Um, Fleeing. Fleeing is an option. <laughs> I won't bother with that. Um, is there anything like fancy that I can do with uh, anything that I've got nearby? Well, what? Um, okay, so what kind of thing are you thinking? Um, I'm wondering if there's anything I can do uh, to maybe like manoeuvre that chap so that he's near the 
stage or maybe maneuver him nearer the hole. He's backed up against the stage below the piano currently. Yeah. Um, if you want to maneuver him, you can enter into a grapple, which is basically grabbing him. I strongly advise against it for two reasons. Um, the first is, whilst you would succeed, it's incredibly faffy. There's a flow chart. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredibly faffy and also ineffective. So it's very good for basically holding someone while someone else wails on them okay. if they are ready for it. But to actually move people around, eh, it's yeah, not that's fine. great. I'm just the other option is it's from... incredibly complicated mechanically, just like Ben's saying. Um, so I tend to avoid it where possible, unless it's like totally a thing that you should be doing. Yep. I'll try to deter you. I'm could, just could... going to hit him with my big sword, I think. So, so if you want to knock him, you could bull rush. There is. Oh. The, oh. Now, bull rush okay. is where basically you use your combat maneuver um, bonus yeah. with an attack to push that person backwards um, and basically move them. What you wouldn't be able to do is bull rush someone towards you. So you, if you're trying to get them into a hole which is off to Just your side, of pushing them backwards. It's a good way to, like, if you're fighting on a cliff top and they're right up against yeah. you, you can go and shove them off, but you couldn't can pick I, them up and move them. Can I them. bull rush this chap against the back of the stage and, like, knock him against the wall? Yes, mechanically, it kind of comes down to me to just say yay or nay, whether it, he takes damage for it, but you would be t he would be taking less damage than you just hitting him with a sword. And the the stage is only five foot Yeah, high. so he'd be, okay. it'd be kind of against his lower back. He wouldn't be, like, pinning him. Lower back? How tall is this guy? Incredibly tall, I just realised. I'm not good at distances. All right, fine. Not good at distances. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll hit him with my big sword then. <laughs> I, I know it sounds a bit boring. No, that's fine. I'm sure sometimes it'll... you just have to just hit the thing. Yep, I'm sure it'll get... I'll, I'll find other ways, uh, also, more it's... interesting ways hitting him with my big sword later. If it was on his lower back, he uh, could just push it until it breaks his back. Mm. He's a man in plate armor with a big shield. Mm. That's quite heavy. That is For all you know, thinking. it's a monster with a back made of... It's me, Metal Spy! <laughs> 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 I'm going to hit him with a big sword. Do it. It's, uh, uh, oh. Too late. No, it doesn't matter. 18. 18. Actually, what's the, what's the crit range on a bastard sword? Um, 19 or 20. Ah, oh, shame. Um, so you don't get a critical, but you definitely hit. Okay. So you will be rolling... The damage for the sword, which is? D10 plus 3. Okay, is that plus 3 your strength, presumably? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so basically roll a D10, whatever you get, plus a flat 3 for your strength bonus. 3. So that's six. 6 total. Okay. Yeah, he uh, basically he, d he doesn't manage to get his sword up in time. And um, whilst you don't like lop an arm off or anything, you make a good strong connection on his offhand. A lot of blood starts flowing. He is clearly um, not wearing any armour or anything like that. They're very much kind of strictly offensive and don't really seem to be planning on being here very long. Um, okay, something happens that you guys aren't aware of. Um, the guy facing off against Bertie will take a five foot step back. Do I get to... It's a five foot step. So what that means is he's trading his entire move action to move one square, but not provoke the attack. So okay. you would be right in that if he was trying to move, he would basically take a hit, but he is trading a whole move action just to get out of range of you. And then is now going to do another move action. So he will go five, 10. So he's backing up towards the back of the room. He will then do an acrobatics check to get up onto the stage. He'll make it. Oh no. And he'll get there too. And as he was doing so, because he rolled very high, he successfully managed to draw a um, flask of oil. So you now have two people flanking the hole on either Squishy side. Rogue. Uh, both wielding flasks. Well, no, actually, the one that threw one at you obviously still needs to draw oh. again. Um, so, Zolf, you are up. Uh, hold my action until the diplomats do something. Mm -hmm. um, it might be worth pointing out, actually, your floating disc thing, the thing that we oh, yes, of course, realised yes. after I, the last I, episode. I, I read the rules. <laughs> um, oh, it's a foolish idea. Yeah, so I realised that the, the disc is three foot, oh. um, but it can still be used as a stepping stone. You just can't hold. Like, like multiple people. Yeah. Um, it also uh, only floats three foot above the ground or water. Uh, and as yeah. So said, what uh, I yeah. basically was thinking is, honestly, I liked it as a solution, and I'm quite happy to fudge it a little bit. So what we'll say is that there are sufficient amounts of sort of floorboards and stuff poking out uh -huh. that it's too weak for someone to stand on, but it's enough that mechanically they could get on. The problem that you're going to have is that you're not going to just be able to ferry them across yep. 
um, you'd have to sort of go round the edge of the crater with it rather than um, well, sort of going over the... What I'm... Cross that. Smaller bit of the crater. Yeah, could do. Could do. Um, probably should have done that. But uh, I can't... Um, it, effectively, I can't. Is, is the entire crater? Is it? Is that section the one, the bits with the floorboards, or is the entire crater like that? It's just this bit. I've yeah. allowed you to summon it on. Um, you could go round the edge of it because all of the edge is like that, but you yeah. couldn't go across the. Middle That's fine. It's that what I'm going to do is put my good leg forward mm -hmm. um, and um, kind of just drop my shield mm -hmm. uh, just on the floor mm -hmm. and um, lean forward and basically. That I'm not going to be able to move it without it falling down. Uh -huh. um, so basically, just try and help them across. It's now only a five foot jump. Yeah, so they should um, be able so to make it. should that. be okay. Okay. What about the unconscious one. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, they pass them to me, and if not. So, you is know. your turn basically that you're just reaching out and you're. Effectively, kind of holding to do stuff to help them. Would you rather yeah. hold an action to insert? Um, oh, no. Or would, would you rather ready an action? I'd ready an action, yes, okay. for the trigger of a so coming I'm going to spell it out for listeners who may not be aware of it. There are two types of sort of action which aren't doing anything but are preparing to. Hold action is where, in turn order, you s forego your turn to insert it at a later event. So if, say, Bryn is doing something that takes a while, Zolf could hold off to wait until Bryn's finished his thing before inserting his, that kind of thing. Um, but obviously you hold your action, but it, you can't hold it and then stack a bunch of actions. So by the time it comes back around to you, if you've just not used your action, you just skip your go. Uh, readied action is one where you are using that action. It is used in this turn, but how it works is a set of pre um, predetermined um, sort of Triggers. Conditions. conditions, yeah, good word, um, are set, and then when those conditions are met, your event activates, uh, no matter what's happening. But the catch with it is, you have to be quite specific, because if you say, I attack the next person that comes in the room, mm. the rule specifically says, you are so keyed up and ready to attack someone, that let's say that your mate comes in the door, Hiya! No. so you have to, it's not trying to penalise you like you know the evil genie with his wish, I wish to live forever, he turns you into a turtle, but... It is still like you have to be what? careful. An immortal turtle. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. I'm not a genie. Yeah. <laughs> the wings of the <laughs> celestial beam are beyond my more mortal okay. capabilities. Uh, note to self: to when I get to level 18, cast the spell Wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate Wish. So yes, oh, I, will, I, hate wish. I will ready the uh, an action to help the first three people across, the, or the the next people across this uh, thing. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll allow that, yeah. that's fine. Um, in which case then, Sasha, you're up. I look down the hole. You said that there's sure. some stuff going on. Also, could you give me a bit more of a description of what's going on on the stage? Because okay. I'll, I'll probably need to jump across and stab someone in the skull. Sure. You know? So <laughs> on the stage, the lectern that Edison was at, which is yeah. stage right or the left from the audience, has been just blown away. It's been blown off into the audience somewhere. Um, they, the two sort of apparent servants are backed up right to where the curtain was mm -hmm. at the back, uh, each flanking a large hole in the middle of the stage. You are um, sort of towards the front of the stage, mm -hmm. facing them and looking down. To the right is the piano on a large section which appears quite weak, mm -hmm. to the point where if you wanted to do anything clever with it, you could probably get that floor to cave in if you can right. get creative with it. Um, who knows what it would take with it, though. Um, the servants, one of them is already has a flask in hand, another one is sort of seems to be reaching to draw one um, and it's very clear that they're backing into that and just they seem to be keeping, and you know, give me a sense motive. Uh, 13 plus 6, 19. 19, yeah. They're definitely working to just keep people at bay. Um, they're not trying to eliminate every single person here because everything that they've done, clearly they've been going about it the wrong way if that's the job. So there. Apart from the massive bomb that killed the entire audience. Not all of them. Colgate and Byron, they're kicking around. <laughs> yeah, and th five people in total. God, that's, out of, that's out a of Saturday life. morning cartoon I want to see, Colgate and Byron. Colgate and Byron. <laughs> <laughs> I smell a sitcom. <laughs> no, you don't. It's Colgate. Uh, <laughs> minty, minty fresh sitcom. Um, <laughs> Colgate and Byron. One of them likes toothpaste. The other likes keeping geese on his person. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair with shiny. It's, it's, a very, shiny <laughs> it's a very niche program. Um, so yeah, looking down into the hole, yep. you are again looking down into that wine cellar. Mm. 
but the thing that you're seeing is you're looking against the back wall of that wine cellar mm -hmm. and so the back wall of the yeah the, uh, it's the back wall of the sort of music room is in line with the back wall uh -huh. of the cellar um, there are huge, massive casks against the back, you know, for the pouring of the larger wines rather than some of, like... Large wines! Large wines! Yeah. <laughs> Byron's favourites. Yeah. But um, <laughs> one of those casks is just blown away oh, no. and exposing a, a gaping hole in the back of the wall, which is leading Wait. basically into darkness. Can There's a lot of wine across the floor. Um, and you see that... Yeah, basically, it looks very much like that's where they are going through, but not where yes. they came in, because obviously the servants were um, already kicking yes. around. And there's no sign of Mr. Shiny Face. Uh, Mr. Shiny Face is not there. No. Okay, well, uh, and these guys, if they wanted to stop me coming through, they're they're not going to stop me jumping down no. into the hole. They, they, what they could do is, if you get down there, and let's say that you fluff of acrobatics roll. Yeah, they could throw fire They can literally just drop fire on your head, so you got to factor that in, but right. currently they are not in attacking distance us. Right, okay, so for someone with a pretty high acrobatics skill mm -hmm. and a decent dex, mm -hmm. what is the likelihood of being able to jump across a hole like that? So you want to jump... That's a 20 foot jump. And um, I am five where are you trying four. to jump to? Just if I was trying to jump to get behind people. Isn't that only um, a 10 foot jump? That, that oh, would, right. So that would be... 15, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's a 15 foot jump. Um, a 15 foot jump from standing, um, oh. I can get the DCs for. It's going to be doable, yeah. but not It doesn't really advised. help either, does it? Because everyone is facing in all directions. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that we don't like to mention in Pathfinder is that we have eyes all around our They're heads. all horrible Lovecraftian just abominations. Eyes just go all the way around. So yeah, ah. when it comes to a rogue, it's either catching people that don't know you're there, mm. or it's getting people who are already involved in a fight and can't pay attention. One of the sneaky things that you can do is deliberately hide in the middle of combat. <laughs> yeah, can and I do? Then, uh, but it's a bit of a time investment because you're basically going to spend a turn yeah. to hide, hope that it works, yeah. and then use the next turn I to can't. come out from your hiding place. So it only really works if you're against, say, an archer. Yeah. That's a great tactic. With these guys where they can swap to melee and just go, there yeah. you are, shank. So it. I can't do a Skyrim and just crouch and immediately everyone's like, she's got it! Yeah. <laughs> where is she? Where must, is have, ah! must have been the wind. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned yeah. the servants are all wearing pots on their heads, so that should be yeah. really <laughs> um, Oh, God. I mean, so there's there is no effective option here for a flanker person. I'm going to be a horrible GM and go, move, move, move. It's yeah. combat. You don't yeah. get the time to Yeah, I know. It. Okay. Well, but I wanted to look down. <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go back. If you jump down, you don't need to make an acrobatics check because it's just a five foot drop, so you can do that straightforward. It'll still take you. Sorry, I'm going to move up to this it. dude five, and ten, stab 15. him in the face. Your dex is pretty high, like yeah. uh, you should be able to at least go toe to toe for a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, do I have time to s stab him with my two weapons? Um, it, you've moved first, so no. But if you are next turn, if he doesn't move and you don't move, yes. And you get stabbed with one weapon. Also, um, to be dancing in a way that doesn't actually affect what you did, you did throw one of your weapons, so that move should have been a move and draw. Because you threw oh, a knife. Right, yeah. So no, but they're one. already in my hand. Oh, only two of them, though. But you, yeah, you'll have through one, so and then one you're of them drawing another one out. That's fine, but like he says, it doesn't affect anything that you did. I will have one in my hand because I have two. Yeah, so you can things. still do a single attack. I threw one and yeah, one yeah. That well, what I mean is, what I mean is, if you want to do a two weapon attack next turn, right. you have to yes. draw it. Next so if you time. move and draw your second one and attack with one this turn, you kind of pre. I've got one out right now, though. Sure, I'd advise you doing what he said about drawing it, uh -huh. because if you try to draw a weapon facing them, you get the attacks opportunity. So for instance, he, he now isn't holding a weapon, okay? Right, yep. So if he tries to, uh -huh. you get all of your okay. attack of opportunity, which is quite cool. Are you saying that I get to stab him now or not? Yes. Can I stab him? You can stab him once now, yes. and if he tries to take any weapons out to fight you, you get to stab again. him again. Okay, cool. Can I stab him? I want to <laughs> stab him. Please. Stab him. Oh, six. You may still watch your um, attack bonus with the dagger. Uh, one. Bearing in mind, um, you're not uh, attacking with two, so do the penalties apply? No, they don't. It doesn't. You are taking a feat to mediate the penalties rather than give you bonuses yeah, to cancel them out. So it's not like if you swap to one, suddenly a two-handed fighter is amazing with one. 
Yeah, it's just that usually, because my, my attack bonus is one, and then usually when I'm attacking with the two, I take a minus yeah. one. Uh, okay. And it just gets, yeah. So a lot of the time I was... Honestly, she well, no, rolled what, so low it wouldn't be a factor anyway. What, what I mean is if you're attacking with one weapon, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if, you're, you're if she's four. only holding one. Oh, if you're holding another. Okay. I think is the ruling. Kind of um, yeah, might be you wrong. can hold a shield and yeah. right one. now I'm Forgive only me, holding. It's, it's, a, it's a moot point because she didn't roll high enough. Yeah, I'm j and I'm just holding one dagger like a normal one one weapon lamo, you know. Like you <laughs> crap people with your one weapons. <laughs> yeah, you can hold stuff in an offhand and you don't take penalties. It's when you start trying to attack with both. It's yeah, a, it's, so yeah, it would be a plus four then. Um, still not. No, I know, but it's just important to know. Oh no, no I get you. Yeah, I understand. Um, why am I rolling? <laughs> yeah. um, I don't yeah. get anything. I'm afraid you, you don't get that. But like I said, but if I'm he tries to draw, I'm standing in the way so he can't hit Hammered again because I'm a freaking hero. And, and the magic, yeah. and the magic missiles go woo. Oh yeah, magic missiles. Magic. They can't. Yeah. They can't affect you. Yeah. Okay, which brings me to Hammered. Shoot him! One. <laughs> Shoot him! Shoot Two. him! Three, four. Magic missile. Oh, I don't have so to. So you basically. Here. Try and make a point of describing what you're doing for listeners. So you've uh, gone so around I'm moving, the crater. I'm moving around the to. crater. And I'm casting a third magic missile at the guy who burned me, uh, and the magic missile swerves unerringly around Sasha. Oh, unerringly, good word. To to catch him totally by surprise, and I roll a four again, Ooh. do another five damage. Oh, that may. You know what? Teamwork. Yeah. My standing in front of him, <laughs> in, in effectively waggling a knife. Yeah, that, that four would never have been rolled if you yeah. hadn't been standing in front of him. Yeah, you would have maybe tried to run away. Five, did you everyone. say? Five damage. <laughs> well, he wouldn't have rolled it if he ran away like a cowardly coward. <laughs> He's oh, not fair. down. Oh, no. That's absurd. I know. Even right? our biggest guy only has 13 hit points. I know. I know. Maybe these guys are level two. <laughs> yeah. Those don't exist. Don't talk about mythic creatures of that power. The legendary level three. <laughs> yeah. We better be getting a lot of XP for this encounter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so heading into uh, the next round. Uh, sorry, the basically the next player, I should say. Um, the one who you just hit, who's looking at Sasha, oh. holding a dagger, having been hit by a magic missile. He basically takes a look at the situation, <laughs> takes a five foot step left, into a hole. And takes that drop. He then tries to mediate falling. Unsuccessfully. Oh. He doesn't break a leg or anything. Ah. Um, but he uh, he still, like, that's his turn, is that mm -hmm. he's landed. Um, so he is currently, if you, you can still see down. Mm -hmm. He jumped, he fell, and then he landed with a splash um, awkwardly. On I broke in on a sort of bo a barrel that was floating there and, and broke under him. So the, okay, I'm just sketching out the load. So uh -huh. this is the where is the hole roughly here. The hole is about ten foot and yeah about there. So you might want to just scribble a yeah. This is the lower floor that you're drawing. Yeah, and there are caskets so on either side that are ten foot wide each. Caskets. Casks. Casks. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Spooky oh, wine sorry. And there's yeah. a, I, I, I did forget to mention there's an enormous amount of vampires. Uh, <laughs> right. Awkward. <laughs> but most it. of those aren't like whole, they're kind of blasted and leaking and a bit mucked up. <laughs> <laughs> to spell out for listeners, Lid drew some lovely, lovely um, casks and then just kind of squiggled on them with a finger to try and make them look a bit more messed up. Mm. So yeah, he landed on basically one of those big jobs. Okay, Bertie, you're up. Okay, I have an idea for a thing that I would like to do that's a bit showy. Um, and Sounds very you. I know, <laughs> I, I would like to put in the extra effort if it's possible. I want to know how rickety this bit of the stage is. Pretty rickety. Pretty rickety. Give me a perception check. <laughs> for a rickety level. Ten minus one is <laughs> nine. You've hit things that are less rickety than that, <laughs> and they've broken. Like that table. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> My old nemesis, the table! <laughs> still standing, oh. still uh, <laughs> Slightly askew. A little bit cockeye. <laughs> I 
have, to, never I have to do a recall at the end of the campaign, just resulting in you looking at a table. Somehow I have oh, to have that. I've never let it be said that Sir Bertrand McGuffingham does not leave his enemies <laughs> slightly wonky. <laughs> you have to right. be the illustrator about that, right? What, what I would like to do is um, do a power attack on this bit of stage sure. um, through um, with the piano bit on it as well knocking as much of that floor out as possible and hopefully tilting that guy so he falls down unexpectedly. So yeah, you basically like a baseball swing into the actual stage. Massive, absolutely massive. All full weight, straight charge, straight into the base of the stage, hacking away at that. Ideally through the piano as well if I can reach it. <laughs> just the maximum force possible in order to try and collapse the floor from underneath the chap who's just on the other side of the piano. Because I have a minus eight acrobatics thing. <laughs> Which means I'm just going to be like I'm just going to be jumping up impotently <laughs> like a toddler yeah, um, totally. at the edge of a playpen. Go for it. Stage. In combat, is he allowed to do the takes to like the pomp and pageantry thing? So but it's not about slowing himself down. Yeah. So, yeah. so the thing is, the, the logic being is that you can't apply to attack because you're going. I'm going to hit you. Here yeah. it comes, and you didn't put any force behind it. So, but he could in combat. Let's say. I don't, can't think of any scenario that would require this. Let's say he's trying to open a lock, even with his minus a million <laughs> armor check penalty. He could do that in combat. You can open locks in combat. Look at this lovely lock! <laughs> but <laughs> instead of it taking him 50 rounds, because he can't do it anyway, yeah. it'd take him 100 rounds. <laughs> ah, Mr. Lock, my old nemesis. <laughs> Have you ever read Mr. Table? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but yeah, uh, okay. go for it. Give, I'm gonna give, do that. give me the I attack roll. I'm gonna. Uh, can I power attack that yep. table? So the table, the piano. Right? The <laughs> in the general, the AC of unmoving objects is five. Okay. So uh, large wall size. You're gonna be all right. Roll it. Basically, I'm trying to see if you fluff. If you okay. don't fluff it, then yeah, you get the hit. Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it was no. close. What's your attack bonus. <laughs> My attack bonus. Uh, Four, Four but you, if you're activating power attack, it which was you dropped did. by one. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> a total five. of five. five. Seven in total, then. Uh, no. No? no? So I rolled two on the dice. Yep. And oh. then plus yeah. four, minus okay. one. Oh, minus one. So you're on to five on the money. Basically, you wind up, <laughs> give it a massive baseball. No! <laughs> Don't miss completely, but you did kind of do what you did with the table, which is you just misjudge where you're going to hit it, and you totally like lop off all the legs of the piano, and it goes whoosh, boom, yeah. and the floor cracks and creaks, doesn't give way, uh. but you did just you perfectly severed all of the limbs of the piano, but didn't actually manage to break the floor. Not such a grand piano now, are we? Oh, hey? oh that's in character, isn't it? <laughs> could it? Could it crack under the weight of that insult? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so keeping it moving. Um, give me a perception check, but I'm Sasha. Da. Nineteen plus. Where is it? I think it's six. Was my perception? Yes. So twenty-five. You hear further explosions down the tunnel, um, no. which are, you know, um, that it looks like they're trying to head towards. Okay. Um, Scary times. Yep. Yeah. And two. Okay, the guy who is on the far side of the piano. Is holding a flask. He chucks it at Bertie. Yeah. Ooh, that might, might not. Uh, no, 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 it won't. Have an AC um, of 20. It, does not, it might have a touch attack. Um, it does not. Not, not what they're using, basically. Okay. Um, he launches it. It basically, it sails over, lands vaguely near Zolf, let's say. Again, doesn't hit him, just sets uh, some fire. He then curses um, and then does the same thing, the five foot step to drop down. Also lands awkwardly on the other side one. Um, so exactly the same as the other one, he lands, he's kind of on his back amongst broken barrel going, oh God. Um, and Zolf, you are up. Diplomats should have moved already because I readied an action oh, last round. So we did, so we did, I apologize. Um, yeah, I skipped theirs. So that's fine. Yeah. What they will have done is, huh, 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 will retroactively do this. They yeah. try to chuck over the one who is injured. Oh, Which one is injured? That one. The one on the side. No, I mean, is it the Japanese diplomat? Or uh, it? Yes, it was, the, it was okay. the Japanese diplomat of here to be injured. <laughs> this is me holding out my hands, In ready fairness, to catch them. I should point out why, actually, the fire has basically moved into a square that they were previously occupying. Yeah. Because it's 
closing in quite fast. Yeah. Uh, firing Pathfinder is a bit of a weird one. It moves like one square radially, so you can have this thing where a fire can spread really quickly. Um, to massively shoot myself in the foot. Mm -hmm. Why is it not moving that way? Yeah. Oh, it should be too. I apologise. Yep. <coughs> like twice. That's, that's towards us. Uh, for people who can't <laughs> see. So we'll call it that. that. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a problem soon. Be careful about your feet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you lost the other one. It is a wooden thing. So, don't want to catch fire. No. No. Oh. Okay, can you give me a reflex save? Yes, please, yes, a catchy, catchy save. You will be getting a bonus because you're ready to an action. Ooh, my reflex bonus is zero. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, they basically, the fire's coming in, they don't have any other options. They chuck um, the injured one across. You reach out, successfully grab them, but they don't come onto your side. They're basically hanging over the gap. Okay. Um, and it cool. is, that's what's been happening. It is your turn now. Heave! Yep, give me man. a strength check. Yes. <clears throat> Ooh. Nine. Nine, do you have any bonuses? That is including my bonus. Uh, unless it's an athlete. Oh, the athletics no. isn't a thing in this system. Yes, that nine. Athletics is uh, four, isn't it? Uh, version four? <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, <laughs> no, no, you're going to have to. Uh, just it, while I'm doing that, just shout at the person. Jump across yourselves! Yep, yep. So, their turn. First one. Um, I had to backtrack, so yeah. he's sort of hanging. Oh, okay. And the two. They, so wasn't he unconscious? Yeah, they. they yeah. Oh, right, That's so he's holding across. Yeah. They gotcha. tossed him across, so he's, he's holding an unconscious body over a gap. Uh -huh. And then the first of the other diplomats does the jump. So only a five foot jump. Makes it. Yay! Just. Yeah. They're on shaky territory, um, but they still have their move action, so. So they go to there because they don't really know what they're doing. Um, <coughs> Just mill around going, we're not fighting. The other <laughs> one. The, Roche. <laughs> the other one. Leap! And fails it. Wait, can I make a reflex save to grab him with my other hand? <laughs> yes, you are in range. Bear in mind, though, that it's going to make pulling them up harder and you will be taking a penalty for the one you're already holding That's later. fine, that's fine. I can Give just hold on to them and save. wait for help. Because you did say you would reach out for all of them. It depends on the bonuses. It might be a 10 DC. Eight. Eight. No. Basically, they, uh, you see the French diplomat runs... No, 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 no! You swing and miss, barely, you barely miss them. They um, drop, um, you see them drop about 20 feet, uh, and there's a splash, there's that much fire and smoke, you can't see what happened to them. Yeah. Oh. It's a very sort of cliffhanger-esque. No! Yep. Too much noise, you don't know. They could be all right, but probably not. Well, balls. I'm assuming that wasn't in character. No. <laughs> I'll use the accent if I'm in character. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a break now, and then we'll get back to the action in a couple of minutes. Ooh. Hi guys, Alex here. Normally we'd put an ad break at this point, letting you know about new developments at Rusty Quill, mention sponsors, or just recommend other shows that we think you'd enjoy. But today, we just want to take the time to thank you. It takes a lot of time and effort and money to make podcasts like this, and it means a lot to us that you've decided to listen, so thank you. You're awesome. In fact, you are so awesome that we want to keep making great content for you and introduce you to loads of new shows, but in order to do that, we need your help. The more listeners that we get, the more content we can make. It's as simple as that, and the best way that we can get listeners is by word of mouth. In the credits at the end of the episode, we include details about how you can get involved online, but honestly, the best way that you can help us is by recommending us to people that you know. Tell a friend, tell a co-worker, tell your pet iguana. If just one of the people or lizards that you talk to subscribes, that's going to be a huge help to us. We're looking forward to making loads more content for you in the future, and we want to share it with everyone that you care about. So thanks again for getting involved, and we hope we get to meet you, your friends, and all your lizards real soon. Well, that's everything for now, so sit back, relax, and let's get back to the show. And welcome back. 
So we are now into the next turn. Hamid, you're up. I'm sort of. Part yeah. of me wants to help, but I... <laughs> part of me wants. Yeah. To well, help. the thing is, I want to help the people that are still alive in this room. Uh huh. But I have literally no way of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any way to deal with the fire. Have you got any way of suppressing that chap who's fallen through? Um, can you? Take can I take a quick you glance be able to see it, down the crater to? My you are right left. at the edge, so you can look down. Yeah. Uh, it's similar to Zolf's end. There, it was a wine cellar, and there's huge, like, dinks in the floor, and where wine is draining away, clearly some massive explosives have gone off. Um, you, it looks like it'd be a bad idea dropping down at that particular point. That area up there, there's a sort of, it's raised up by rubble and so on, so they've kind of dropped down and then rolled across, so it's not the sort of 30 foot, you're looking more like a, a 15 foot, 10 foot drop, it's doable. Um, for there, you're looking at 30 foot. You could do it, but in Pathfinder, it's like every five yeah. foot beyond a certain amount, like 20 or 10 or something, you're looking at 1d6 damage. So fall damage in Pathfinder works. Like, it, it's yeah. a good way of getting rid of your problems. Um, I am going to shout, one of them got away with something important. Okay, you're going to yeah. do an acrobatics check and to get up the stage. Basically, double move to... Yep, so let's get an acrobatics check to get you up the stage. Good. Uh, 15 plus yeah, 4, fine. 19. Yeah, you're fine. You're onto the stage, and then you just drop down, so you do the acrobatics check to mediate your fall rather than to actually get down there. 15 plus 4, 19. Yeah, yeah awesome. So you basically you sprint That's towards right. the stage. I might be a sorcerer, but I'm also a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> how, how close are you to... Uh, you, he will be landing actually pretty much the exact square that he placed himself in. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, yeah, okay. that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, can I look around and see the guy who just fell? Is ah, he on the other side of the room? Okay, give me a perception check. Uh, 17 plus 6, 23. You see what is... Okay. The thing that you're seeing is there are lots of bodies. A lot of people have fallen through the floor. I mean, there's a few more bodies around sure, here sure. I haven't put on, which I probably should yeah, have, but no I'm lazy. Yeah. But there's a number of bodies that are down there. Um, it looks like a couple might be moving. Um, it's hard to tell. There's a lot of movement in the water, like masonry's falling and putting ripples around. Um, you do, do, however, see clearly that there is someone there moving. Okay. Uh, you can't hear them over the noise, but you can see someone sort of thrashing... And towards Do I have any movement speed left? No. Uh, okay. Not the way that you've done that, basically. Sure. Yeah. Because you, you're acrobatic, doubled, and yeah. so on. Um, but yeah, that was actually, yeah, I like that. Good, good thinking. Um, okay. The first one that fell uses his move action to stand up, sees you. Foolish. Foolish. And he can't charge because he's on um, basically rough, rough terrain. He's, he's stood amongst a giant broken cask, so he can't charge. He is also hammered further up like a mound of rubble. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult terrain. No one's charging. Okay. Um, so what will he do? He will take a... He will do an acrobatic check to try and move across the broken cask without hurting himself. I mean, you will die and uh, fail, which means he has to move one square. So can you move him one, two, yeah. He's basically blocking the sort of tunnel entrance. Okay, and that's his entire turn because he botched his acrobatics and used his move to stand up, which leads us on to Bertie. Okay. You've just really, really <laughs> knackered a piano. Yeah. Um, okay, I've got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. How uh, rickety is the... Uh, Sorry, Lid is pointing at the Japanese diplomat. Yeah, who's, who's currently strong, dangling over a hole. Strong man. Yeah. I want it to be a very subtle reminder, but not to oh, that's fine. Not no, it's okay. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that's my top priority at the moment, because there's still enemies that need vanquishing, and <laughs> you, you can't make economyaki without breaking eggs. So. <laughs> oh, <Hi>. nice. <laughs> um, so okay, it's not I, quite a Chessington world. I, no, I, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it can't all be gold. Um, so 
Okay. Um, right. What I what I'm thinking I would like to do mm-hmm. if the stage is still sufficiently rickety is I want to have another hack at the stage, let the piano fall through straight onto those one, possibly two who are directly underneath it. As far as I can tell from how sure. things are staged, it would be about here. there. Would it? Although you might not necessarily it's know four that. <coughs> it depends how much stage it takes. Oh, down. Yeah. No, it'd be there. Yeah. True. But the the piano. The four piano would is... not be falling directly onto them. Okay. So but... it would like bounce. Or... But it's near. You you could be getting basically a, a sort of shrapnel effect, okay. and also just it'll... just shove the piano into the hole. They can drop the... through okay. the hole. Just shove the piano into the hole. You can totally do that. Can I shove the... I'm going to shove the piano through the hole. Um, um, I'm going to make that a strength check because you're already stood. You can literally reach out, yeah. and you don't have it's to got no legs, or anything. so it's actually a <laughs> you, shoving. Yeah, you are you are literally shunting it. Why not hit it with the flat of your bastard sword like a baseball bat? <laughs> you would be doing an attack roll for that. Is that a better? Bonus. You Basically, get more bonuses on an attack roll. You will get more bonuses roll. on an attack roll, but you are rolling to have any effect at all. Okay. A strength roll, you are just. I am guaranteeing you that you can move it as you okay. oh, roll. Okay. How yeah. far it moves is on the strength. But so would you rather? Wait. <laughs> basically, it's a choice between maybe no effect and missing, but if you do make contact, it it moving more, basically, mm-hmm. or you guaranteeing that something happens, but it being less likely to be an overwhelming advantage. I think the, the more obvious thing is for shoving it, because it's at shoving height. I agree. It also makes it, like, it makes retroactive narrative sense, and Bertie's got an eye on that. <laughs> <laughs> for chopping the legs up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to do all this all along. I'm right. not going to be not going to be going soft on you, right? Retro- yeah, oh. <laughs> retroactively justifying your previous mistake. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I like that. Um, go with go with it. Go with the strength. Okay, the cool. Strength, so yeah. we're going with the strength. We're giving it a shove. Yep. I've uttered that immortal line, which I think deserved better than it got. I didn't even get it. Uh, a piano that means soft. So I'm not going soft on you. Uh, oh, 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 James! James get out. Just roll the dice. I mean, my, actually, my character. Puns, what he does. <laughs> also, isn't the full phrase piano fortissimo? Uh, oh, maybe. You can edit all <laughs> no, that out. No, but that's just, that's just uh, I'm not going oh, to. Keep it in. Uh, <laughs> you roll your dice and you feel. Right. You think about what you've done. It's fine. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, Bertie um, gives the uh, the edge of the piano an almighty shove. Uh huh. Fifteen Ooh. plus an ability modifier, strength modifier of three is eighteen. Yep. Bertie basically. Um, I will say that you have to drop your bastard sword to have gotten both hands on it. You can't just sort of one hand shove it. Okay, I, would I sheathe it or um, does it make just, a difference if I just, drop it? Just drop. All right, fair enough. Well, I mean, if shoving is a standard action, he can pick it back up again. With that's a, that's what action. I was going to say, yeah. is that you basically okay. dropped it. I'm just right. I'm about to describe what happened, so don't go, I didn't do that. Fine, yeah. Drop your bastard sword, shove that piano hard as you can. It goes tumbling down the, um, the hole and... Crunch straight onto the one on the right hand side. So it, that hole. Yeah, so that, there, that hole is sort of there. It falls so awkwardly, just... some of the floor falls um, away, it lands yeah. on that guy. Yeah. And this um, guy's so. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> it, it spun the model around as Lynn drew the pen <laughs> around it. So it did die, a lovely little pirouette. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, what. Hamid sees is Hamid's just been looking over there to see what happened to the French diplomat. Turns back to see a piano just <laughs> Thanks, Bertie! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> I knew what happened. There's, there's only one person I know who would make a pl- piano drop on my head. <laughs> this is almost exactly like that bar fight the second time. <laughs> What's fascinating is you've managed to make a completely cartoon scenario happen. Yep. Totally legitimately <laughs> yeah. and not in a weird way. Okay, cool. Um, Perception check to see if it's rolled. Written there, the piano is made by the Acme Piano Company. Um, <laughs> I am going to find out whether. Okay. Um, I'm just going to cross that person off from the. <laughs> 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 yep, yeah, so. Uh, no, the body might be in the way of the whole. I think the, the piano is more in the way. <laughs> yeah. True. Let's just say yeah. that Zolf, you're up. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, now I've got a hand free because I dropped my trident to try and grab the other guy. Second hand. Really try and yank this guy up. Sure. Um, and hope I don't roll like a fool. I rolled like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> How badly? Eight. Eight. I'm still kind you, of. You can sustain, going, but... but you can't lift. Need a little help here! <laughs> uh, Sasha. Uh, I want to jump on that guy and stab him in the head from above. Ah, the full mm. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. 
So, totally yeah. doable. I'm just trying to think mechanically. There is there is actually a feat which you may want to look into, um, yeah. which is... Stab in the head like a cool, cool person. <laughs> it's a really long word for a feat, but bizarrely, that's what you call it. Um, it's, it's something like there's a leap attack and then there's an advanced form of it, where it, it is literally that, like, if you are dropping from above on someone, you get a bonus to hit, and then the advanced one is you get a bonus mm. to damage, and then a bonus to blah, blah, blah. If, if I was going to do that, I'd put more... Uh, Stats in climb first because yeah, I mean, this this scenario is rare. It's that's the thing is it's one of those ones where it gives you huge bonuses in a really context specific one. Yeah. So yeah, you get to drop down, and I'm not going to make you do an acrobatics check to um, mediate your fall because you're basically proper. trying to you're trying to land on him. Yeah. So can you do me a favor and just give me an attack roll? There will be a penalty. I'm going to rule. Don't I get a bonus for bear jumping with, on his bear head? With, bear with. Um, because it's such a complex action that you're trying to do, I'm going to give you a minus one to hit, but a plus one on damage. Yay! Ten. Plus your modifier. What, what, wait, which thing is the modifier? So if you're that attacking with the single, you're not doing a double or anything, mm. it will be... That, is that the attack bonus thing? One? Or? Um, basically, just... Even looking at the mass, it's not possible for like any permutation of it. You've you've dropped short by like a couple. What? I'm an acrobatic superstar. A level one acrobatic. (laughs) (laughs) He's still down. Definitely not standing up. He's standing up. Oh yeah, he did. He sidestepped, didn't he? Yeah. And he he didn't get knocked over by the piano. The other guy got completely taken out by it. Nonsense. Um, Um, It was a good solid try though, and I'm not going to make you. Roll acrobatics to have not fallen, basically. Um, but yeah, uh, the diplomats. Um, you see the one who, because you have your eyes in all directions, you basically hear a cry. I also rolled like twenty-five on my. Yeah, you rolled amazingly roll. high. So yeah, that you. I'll tell you what you hear. You hear the French diplomat. Um, Please, can somebody help me? Please. Um, meanwhile, the diplomat on the end of Zolf's arm is on. Conscious? Yes. Is unconscious. Um, as sort of like a. However. Oh, cool. This diplomat. Yes. Is going to try and help Zolf. Yes, he is. Good it is over. diplomat. Wraps his hand into. That's uh, diplomacy. His <laughs> wraps, hand, wraps his hand onto Zolf's belt, and starts trying to yank him back. Doesn't succeed. It's a very frail office. <laughs> office. Drone, I was, was going to say he's. This, this isn't a particularly like well-built individual. <laughs> um, in which case, Hamid, you're up. Uh, I cast Acid Splash on the one remaining standing enemy. I have to ask. Maybe you <laughs> don't <Lydia>. like <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a me. cunning backstab with acid. So this is a ranged touch attack. Sure. So um, just to spell out, uh, just for your roll, a touch attack is going against someone's touch AC which ignores certain aspects of the things that normally would count into your AC and that's to reflect the fact that they're not actually having to hit the person they're not having to make real contact it's just if acid even gets on their armor it's still going to be doing a hit so what was the attack uh eight eight no won't make it yeah um so I'm afraid it's a good try but just swing and miss yeah um, this guy is like blessed when someone drops down and misses him and there's a piano like inches away on the other side he's, he's, and acid is splashed he's next all, to his he's feet. He's already like millimetres from death from yeah. all the damage we've oh, done him yeah, earlier Yeah, as totally. Well. I mean, he's got a pronounced limp. Um, <laughs> and yet still is like dodging his pianos, turn, assassins he and acid He is splashes. going to dive out down that hole. Which hole? Oh, the one behind him. What a poop. He's going to leave the guy who's covered in piano and... <laughs> is he going to make, make a withdrawal action? He might. By which I mean yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to keep you guys in uh, combat time a little bit longer. Um, but be aware, obviously, that those guys are now no longer in this sort of mm-hmm. battle scenario. If you were to chase them down, yes. that's fine. Yes. Um, but everything else is still happening in those uh, initiative order. Okay. Um... And you know what? I think Bertie, you're up. Okay. Um, I think if that chap has kind of fled out of range, mm-hmm. I think it's probably more reasonable that I would start helping. Yeah, very much. Yay, the big strong man. Yeah. 
So, so I, you can get there in a single move? Yeah. Because cool. you have both your legs. Yep. And they're a human. Mm -hmm. And you also get to make a strength check as your standard action. Seven plus three for strength check is ten. Um, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> this is oh, Laurel and Hardy dead. levels of just incompetence. <laughs> Three people are like, oh, is there not? I am the ambassador. Does he not get a bonus? From the, does he not get a bonus from the other people helping? What I may have been leading to is they may choose to, they may not. You're a scary man. No, it's fine. Um, basically, both of you, actually. All I'm not three. Sure. Mechanically, I'm not sure if they're allowed to give a help unless it is like they ready the action on the other person's turn in combat. I don't know. That's a good. Uh, a I'm going to say that basically you're not coordinating, and that if you wanted to help one another, you basically you'd have to all ready your actions to give a massive coordinated heave. Otherwise, you're basically pulling sure. kind of against one another. Um, so, I'd say that you, it's it's almost a foregone conclusion that the person's up, but they're not yet. Um, Zolf. Do I, uh, your option is either try on your own before they've coordinated, I'm, or ready in action and tell them basically. The diplomat goes after me, right? Yes. So I'm going to say, right, on three, as the ready one, two, three. Yeah, I get you. Three. So um, Bertie right. won't be helping on this. Yeah, that's one. fine, but I need to, I have to roll a hold. skill check to count to three. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, yeah, if the uh, Sasha first, and then it'll be the diplomat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, how? F firstly, can I do a perception check on whether anyone has come in to frickin' help since there was a big explosion and there's all these bodies? Uh, um, yeah, please roll a perception just, check. Is there anyone in the, this massive building? Worth us spreading the fire twice, we forgot to. Which again is massively unhelping me. It's alright, I, I lose track of things, so but it's quite useful because that was the point of the fire. I'm just fabulously fire tracking myself. Um, the whole point of having it included. What is the fire actually burning at this point? And um, there's huge amounts of broken chairs, and okay. um, beams have fallen from carpets. the ceiling, carpets, right. floorboards. Posh, it's it's a fire trap. Problem okay. with posh houses, posh carpets, which are very you know mm. thick. And okay. I never understood why in films so many castles burn down. It's stone. How yeah. does that happen? It's that stuff was, inside. That's because everyone's asking that question. Everyone's got tapestries everywhere. Yeah. Those tapestries. So Can't move wooden tapestries. floors. Anyway, Sasha. Um, yeah, so I just, because there's a lot of, you've been talking about, there's people moving around, broken. Underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and which, which I can see now, mm -hmm. and there's the option to, so, yeah. What, uh, you haven't told me what you're doing. Oh, you I want a perception <laughs> check to hear perception. if there's anyone coming. Oh, yeah, coming. okay, I'm sorry. I, I, you I got, got a 15. I, I saw that land, but that was a 15, I, right. I misheard you. Okay, um, what's your perception modifier? Uh, six. Six, so, so you're at 21 total. Mm -hmm. um, you hear calls from um, elsewhere in the building. It sounds like they're coming from a door which is mm -hmm. sort of directly above you that would lead onto the stage. Mm -hmm. um, and you hear the cries of the Frenchman and maybe a couple of other people um, dotted around the, mm -hmm. the cellar, but you couldn't pinpoint, pinpoint the other two. You knew the Frenchman because basically yeah. you were aware of him falling. Okay, I think that people who are much better at healing and helping will probably be coming along, so I want to sneak down that hole mm -hmm. and follow them. In which case, um, I will get you to make a stealth check now. How, wait, how far has he gone down that? Out of sight. Right, okay. Yep, stealth check. Cool. Go for it. I think I'm quite stealthy. I'm mm -hmm. pretty stealthy. I'm 14 plus 7. So right. 21. 21, 21 solid. Stealth. Okay, so you get to move your move. You're going to be off the map, but you're still in combat time, so you disappear off the map. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, last but not least, the diplomat. It's Hooray. three. So he'll be rolling the strength check, and you roll to aid. My aid was four. Your aid was four. You don't aid, but. He makes it. Um, we'll pretend I did. <laughs> all of you managed to pull up the, um, the basically the knocked out Japanese guy. Japanese diplomat. Cool. Uh, but you are next to a raging fire, so you may want to move. Yeah. Um, given that he has used his strength check, but still has a move action because that was his standard action, the diplomat is going to do so. Mm -hmm. um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 30. Cool. Um, and I think that is a good place to call it. We're still we're still in a kind of emergency situation, but mm. the the fight 
aspect is certainly kind of wrapped up. So um, we'll call that here and then cool. we'll uh, reconvene with you listener next week. So that's uh, goodbye from me. Bye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> it's a place to see the back of you, really. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, all. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit RustyQuill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at RustyQuill.com. Thanks for listening. How are we finding it so far? Mmm. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Delicious role play. Mm.